Hi, my name is Patrick Muselek, and I like music a lot. One of the things that I like most about music is that it's easily shareable with people. And so what I wanted to do with this video was to share with you guys my 13 favorite albums of 2013. Hello everybody, this is Patrick. This is Chris. And this is the seventh episode of The Music Room. Today we're starting our special three-part series of our favorite albums of 2014. Best, favorite, most, wonderfulest albums of 2015. Top 12 of 2015. Top 12 of 2015. Hello everyone and welcome back to the music room. Even though we didn't necessarily do that on purpose, I think it's going to work out in our, to our advantage in regard to these two episodes, mm -hmm. which are our best albums of 2016 episodes. Hello everybody, my name is Patrick and this is my list of my 12 favorite albums of 2017. Hello everyone, my name is Patrick and this is my list of my 12 favorite albums of 2018. I want to do something special with everybody for my top 12 albums of 2011 list. Uh, with that being said, here's the top 12 albums of 2019, according to me. Welcome back, everybody, to the last episode of Patrick Mia Select's Top 12 Albums of the Decade. And number one, top album of the decade, as chosen by me, Patrick Musilek, Violetta, Violetta Trilogy, Volume 3, by Kaiser's Orchestra. Violetta, Violetta, Volume 3. Number one. Here we are, at the end of this incredibly long journey. We have reached my number one best album of the decade. Something that I've thought a lot about. If you've watched any of the other videos that I've been uploading, and even maybe some that are still coming that I've previously recorded, you'll know that this was such a tough decision for me. I had about maybe four or five albums that I was like, these all deserve to be number one. But at the end of the day, it came down to two albums, Break From This World by Globus, and of course, the one I ended up picking, Violetta Violetta Trilogy Volume 3 by Kaiser's Orchestra. Now, two videos ago, I talked about my love for this band a little bit, but more specifically, my love for the singer, Yanov, because his solo album is my number three favorite album of the decade. So, of course, we know that I love Kaiser's Orchestra, and I've talked about them before in other videos. But the thing that made this album really special, the thing that made this album, ended up making this album my number one, is the fact that if there was no orchestral elements on this album, it would still be a fantastic album. But because it would be almost impossible, actually, to, to not have the orchestral elements in this, because it's such an integral part of the songwriting process. In the last video, when I was talking about Globus's album, I talked about the idea of having orchestral elements being added to a pop song or to a generic rock song to sort of help make that song stand apart, to take that song to the next level. Well, that's what Kaiser's Orchestra did with this entire album. Every song on this album was crafted with the idea that there was going to be an, orche an orchestra as the sort of sixth member of the band, as it were. Or I guess in this case, the seventh member, because the Kaiser guys have two guitar players, p keyboard player, drummer, uh, bass player, singer. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I talked about how Yanov was such an incredible singer, incredible songwriter. Every song had a sort of different sprinkling of special things on it. That's all here. That's all here on this album. 
but with the added element of having an entire orchestra be blended in with the mix. Again, though, not just blended. It is an integral part of these songs. In the last video, I mentioned something like the James Bond theme songs. The James Bond music is so special because usually it's just a one-off song. The, the people, the producers of the James Bond movies, the soundtrack people, the, the, uh, the scoring people, they get together with an artist that's popular at the time, and they say, we're going to record a song for you with an orchestra. Something that was commonplace back in the 50s, 40s, 60s maybe even a little bit. You think about Frank Sinatra, uh, Bing Crosby, those kind of guys. Back at the, in the day, big band music, that was what was the, sort of the norm. Well, not everybody could afford that, and it was impractical to have albums that had that much of an orchestral sort of um, mixing in. Well, this album, much like the James Bond theme songs, as I've already said, they took a regular song and they added an orchestral mix to it that made it more than just a regular song. There are certain songs on this album that if you took the orchestra out, there wouldn't be enough elements there to still have a song. And I know I keep going on and on and on about how the orchestra is so important, the orchestra is so important. Well, they're called Kaiser's Orchestra. For the people who don't know, Kaiser's, a Kaiser is an organ, a Kaiser's organ. This band is from Norway, as I mentioned in the Jana video. And none of their music before this had had an orchestra along with uh, the other instrumentation for the songs. So when they started out doing the Violetta Violetta trilogy, they knew they were gonna make it into a trilogy. The first uh, volume is called Violetta Violetta Volume One. And that came out in 2011. Later in 2011, they released Volume Two. And then in 2012, as their swan song, they knew it was gonna be their last album before they broke up, they released volume three. While they were working on volume one and volume two, they were actually writing and recording volume three, but they, wanted to, they knew they wanted to take the time. They wanted to take the time to really put this album together because this album is a coming together of parts that I cannot even fathom how technically difficult it was to make this album. To have a band be recorded and have the band sound good is a feat that's almost impossible in and of itself. To record an orchestra is something that's very hard to do well. The recording studio I used to work at, we were known for making orchestral uh, or choir, choral recordings of live performances of an orchestra, just using the, the most minimal amount of mics possible, but still trying to get an orchestra to sound like an orchestra is such an, a hard and difficult process. But to be able to do it to such perfection that the people who recorded this album did on top of having a whole band and lead vocals in every song is just, it's, it's, it's a master craft. It's, 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 a, it's incredible. It is almost close to perfection. As I said, all the different elements come together to make this album what it is, but it's because they're all so integral is what makes it so special. So one of the things about this album that I know in particular that, or one of the reasons that I know this album sits so deeply and closely in my heart is that I actually have a prop for this album. Stagehand, would you bring out my uh, prop for this? So as you can see here, I'll put up over here a picture of the album cover. This is the album cover. This is an actual poster of the album cover that I managed to purchase from Norway, had it shipped here from Norway. I would not do this for almost any album. First of all, the, the idea of a band to release promotional images of the album is one thing. But I love this album so much, I was willing to go the extra mile to purchase this poster, have it hanging in my wall. I see this thing when I wake up first thing in the morning every day. That's how much this album means to me. Thank you, Stagehand, you can go. That's how much this album means to me. And that's just a small thing. That obviously has nothing to do with the music. The music is what this is all about. There are songs on this album. Most of the songs on this album range from five to seven minutes long. There's a few little longer ones. Uh, a lot of the songs have a sort of an orchestral breakdown as the bridge, and then they come back. Uh, there's one of the songs when they perform it live that they have a tap dancing sequence in, uh, which I guess I should mention that too. One of the other reasons I love this album, even though it's sort of a superfluous side uh, reason to 
love it is that they released a Blu-ray of them performing this entire album with an orchestra uh, live. So I can watch them performing the whole album with an orchestra. And that is oh, the most amazing piece of media I think I have. But this is the studio version of all that, so it's all the screws are tightened up a little bit better, and production is something that's so uh, so important to me and near and dear to my heart uh, that I, I always would choose to listen to the studio-produced version. But beyond all that stuff, there's, like I keep mentioning, the songwriting, the band is still here doing what they love best, the twangy, sort of dirty, swampy-sounding guitars. At times, at times they have sort of pop-punky sounding guitars. At, they can make beautiful-sounding guitar riffs, arpeggiated, arpeggiated sort of broken chords, things like that. Yanov is at his absolute peak doing vocals here. There are shouting vocals uh, into a megaphone on a couple of the songs, and that doesn't even sound like a gimmick. That's something I would not normally enjoy very much. There's distorted stuff. There's clean stuff. The last track on the album is sort of a play on theme and variations from uh, some of the several of the more popular songs that had come before it on the album. Uh, the main single, which is called uh, um, Aldre Vodka Violetta, that song is just so, it's the perfect encapsulation of this album. So I would definitely recommend if you want to listen to one song off this album, check that one out. But it, it, it is such a perfect pushing and pulling of a rock song, the orchestral elements coming together to merge. It's just so gratifying to me when you have an orchestra playing and then there's a drummer drumming over the top of it and a bass player playing bass over the top of it. And then there's the two guitar players playing guitar parts, but nothing is getting in the way of anything else that's happening. And then on top of all that, you have the vocalist coming in, just singing his absolute heart out, which is such a cliche, but it is so true on this album. It, I, I can say almost nothing bad about this album. And while the same thing could be said for the last few albums I've talked about in these videos, I went through, I did all the sort of mental mathematics that it took to figure this out. And as I said, the Yanov album, Artistin and Marlene, the album that he released after this album, several years after this album, is in my opinion, my favorite album of all time. It's maybe the most perfect album I've ever heard. But when you add on top of those elements with the orchestra, with the fact that it's their swan song, they know it's going out. This is like the Globus album, everyone giving in 110%, the stars aligning so that people could connect in such a way. There's just no way, hold on, I'm getting, I'm getting passionate about this. There's, this album can never happen again. No album like this will ever happen again. This was a once in a lifetime, once in a millennium, once in the lifespan of the earth, like album. That's how incredible it is. And that's why all those different elements put together, even though I don't think it's my favorite album of all time, it might not be the best album of all time. In my opinion, it's the most impressive album of all time. And it's so close to being the best album I've ever heard. It's so close to being the most perfect album I've ever heard that just that little bit on top of it, the technical uh, difficulty of recording, the incredible amount of things that had to come together and be right at just the right place at the right time with the right pieces of the puzzle, the right elements put together to make something like this. That is why, in my opinion, Kaiser's Orchestra's album, Violetta, Violetta Trilogy, Volume 3, is the best album of the decade. That's why. So, whew. it's interesting to be standing here talking about how we're done. This is something that I've been working on for so long. I couldn't thank you enough for listening to these videos, watching these videos, watching me sit in the derelict broken down school building and talking about bands, just talking, 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 talking about bands and albums. I could talk about them forever. I cannot thank you enough for watching these videos. Sincerely from my heart, I think that this is one of the most impressive, not impressive, that was a that's the wrong word. One of the most amazing projects I've ever worked on. And it's something that all came from me. 
I had people help. I had members of my family help. I had people have to put up with me while I was trying to do this instead of working on other things that might have been more important to them at the time. So thank you very much for being here with me in all of this. Thank you so much for just helping me sort of see my way through this whole vision. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Who are you? What, you want to fight? All right, let's fight. I'm trying to do something special here. I'm trying to show these people what the number one album of the decade is. No, you know what? You can't. No! <laughs> Ow! 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 Weird Al. Thank you for watching the video. It's been the top 12 albums of the decade But now you know So thank you for watching the video So for one last time. and say hello everybody and welcome to the final episode of Patrick's Top 12 Albums of the Day. Hello everybody and welcome back to Patrick Mithlick's last episode. Oh yeah. I can't see you at all doing that. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Smoke's yeah, coming up from your back. Must have been a hot. It was a hot. Come in here, there's a cloud. Should I stop? <laughs> Wait, you can let it go, Mom. <laughs> wow. Wow. So we filmed all of those with my jacket. So does that mean I should keep my jacket on while I'm talking? Yeah. Should I whole keep time? filming or stop? Um, I mean, if you want to just start talking, because you know. Hunter, you're good. We might need a little bit more smoke in a while. But, but you can come sit out front for a while. Okay. So I should leave my jacket on? I think so. It depends what you want. I figured it froze. I'm froze too, but that's okay. My toes. That's all right. Should we unplug it, Dad? Probably. Hold on. While I'm talking, Hunter can just poof out of smoke whenever he wants we to. We need to shut the curtains more because there's a slit oh. there. Yeah, I hear Wrong one. There you go.